Hello class, welcome to lecture 28, and in this lecture we're going to be sort of switching gears back to a meteorology related topic, and that specific topic is going to be uh, the topic of pressure coordinates. And this is something that you'll encounter a lot in some of your dynamics later dynamics courses, so I figured it would be uh, sort of useful to uh, give you an idea of what exactly this is and how things sort of, how our, the math that we've derived up to this point uh, can change a little bit uh, when we use this idea of a pressure coordinate system. So first let's start off by introducing what exactly we mean by a pressure coordinate system. So up until now we've been working with a standard Cartesian grid where each point in space is some value in the x direction, some value in the y direction, and some value in the z direction. So we represent every point or every uh, variable in terms of x, y, and z coordinates. However, in the case of the atmosphere, uh, for the most part, pressure only depends on the height above the ground level, which is typically represented by the variable z here. So what we can do to create a different coordinate system, which can be uh, can actually be very useful, and we'll see why uh, very shortly, but what we can do is we can devise a coordinate system that uh, depends on pressure, pressure and replace our z coordinate with the variable of pressure. So that's the whole idea behind pressure coordinates. We're replacing the standard Cartesian uh, z-axis with a pressure axis. So instead of representing, uh, instead of representing the vertical displacement in terms of z, we're representing uh, the vertical coordinate in terms of pressure. And you might be wondering why would we want to do this in the first place? And there's a couple reasons why. One is it's sometimes difficult to know what your height above sea level is at certain points on the Earth's system. So if you're in a very mountainous area, or even in an area with elevated terrain, knowing what your height above sea level is can be very challenging. And since you're already observing pressures in the atmosphere to begin with, then it's usually, uh, then it might make sense to uh, try and re-represent everything in the atmosphere in terms of pressure, as opposed to trying to, trying to estimate what the height above sea level is at every single point, or the height above ground level for that matter, at every single point that you're sampling. So it kind of makes sense to use pressure as a vertical coordinate whenever we're working with some sort of observational data because the observations we take are already plotted as a function of pressure to begin with, already sampled as a function of pressure to begin with. So if we could devise a coordinate system to accommodate that, then that makes our lives a lot easier. And just sort of uh, articulating what exactly I was mentioning, uh, most phys most physical quantities are sampled. Uh, if you're if say like this, the most common example of this is a weather balloon launch. So if you release a weather balloon in the atmosphere and it travels upward, and it's going to be sampling various atmospheric variables at each at each uh, level in the atmosphere that it is able to that is able to cover, and those values are. Well, some of the values that it reports back are pressure, uh, the temperature at its current location, the wind velocity at its current location, uh, the moisture content at its current location. And since you're sampling pressure, then it makes sense to plot all those variables, temperature, uh, moisture, and wind, in terms of pressure to begin with. And if you can have a coordinate system, some sort of a mathematical coordinate system that also utilizes pressure as a vertical coordinate, then that makes uh, analyzing and makes calculations using uh, this data a lot simpler. And we've kind of seen an example of this to begin with. Uh, if you remember back to the CAPE calculation that we introduced in lecture 21, there were two forms of that equation that we could use. One was in terms of the Cartesian height z, and the other was in terms of pressure. And the one that's in terms of pressure, one, the math behind that is a lot cleaner. Uh, doing the integral that involves the standard Cartesian, uh, the standard Cartesian uh, coordinate z, uh, that math can get really, uh, really complicated really fast. But the integral that involves the pressure as the uh, vertical coordinate or as the integrating variable, it's a lot simpler to work with. And it also turns out that temperature is usually sampled at various pressure levels in the vertical direction. So it's really easy to take something like that particular CAPE calculation and adapt it so that you can use it on uh, some sort of observed values such as the temperature and dew point that you're sampling at various pressure levels in the atmosphere. So that's going to be the main topic for this lecture, is taking a look at just sort of giving a brief overview of what exactly we mean by pressure coordinates and some of the, uh, how we can redefine some of our mathematical quantities in terms of using pressure as a vertical coordinate instead of using the standard Cartesian coordinate z. But one thing that we should note right away is one important difference that we'll have to keep in mind going forward. So you may remember back all the way from lecture one where we define our 
uh, define our Cartesian axis on the globe, where positive x direction points to the east, the positive y direction points to the north, and the positive z direction points uh, directly upward. And by using that definition, if you're going towards higher altitudes, if you're going up higher above ground level, then you're going towards higher values of the z-coordinate. Now, in the atmosphere, pressure normally decreases with height, so that means if you're going towards higher values of z, you're going to be going towards the lower values of pressure. So by using this pressure coordinate system, the coordinate direction is actually reversed. So going towards higher values of z means you're going towards lower values of pressure, and conversely, if you're going towards lower values of z, you're going towards higher values of pressure. And this can be kind of confusing at first if you, um, whenever you first see this, because you pick up, by making this transformation, by going from standard height coordinates to pressure coordinates, you're going to be picking up sort of an, an implicit negative sign by doing so, because as you go uh, in the vertical z direction, as you go in the upward direction, you're going towards lower values of pressure, higher values of z, and as you go down, you're going towards lower values of z and, lower, uh, and uh, higher values of pressure. So these two axes are inversely related to each other. As one goes up, the other goes down. But that's going to do it for this first segment, just sort of introducing pressure coordinates and giving a general overview. And in the next segment, we will take a look at how the vertical velocity changes when we go into using pressure coordinates. So with that, I will see you all in the next segment.